Top executives at Tokyo Electric Power Company are about to find themselves having to explain the company's poor safety record. All right, I'll tell you the truth. Well, that'll be novel. You haven't tried that before. Two of the company's nuclear power plants have recently been hit by accidents. Now Japan's nuclear regulatory body wants to know what TEPCO is doing to ensure safety. The most recent accident happened at a reactor at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant in Niigata Prefecture. The utility found that tubes used to send water to spent fuel pools had warped in 18 places. Officials from the Nuclear Regula Regulation Authority, or NRA, discussed the matter on Wednesday. In another incident last Tuesday, water leaked from a pipe that purifies wastewater at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, site of last year's nuclear accident. TEPCO has systematic problems. I cannot dispel concerns over its safety awareness. Tanaka says he wants to ask TEPCO officials what they intend to do to ensure safety at its nuclear plants. Japanese officials have struggled to deal with the tainted soil from the Fukushima Daiichi meltdown. Now there has been a breakthrough of sorts. The central government has gotten the green light from regional authorities to look for possible so soil storage sites on their land. Fukushima Governor Yuhei Sato told a meeting of leaders from eight prefectural municipalities that he wants to accept the surveys proposed by the Environment Ministry. The surveys would take place at 12 locations in the towns of Futaba, Okuma and Naraha. Officials at the Environment Ministry have asked the towns to allow storage sites to be built on their land. The local governments are concerned about the safety of such facilities. Fukushima government officials relayed the municipal leader's remarks from the meeting. The local leaders made their permission conditional on receiving details and progress of the surveys. And they reportedly said the central government must be made aware that accepting the surveys does not mean they will allow the building of the facilities. We decided to accept the survey because there are various things that can't be known until it is carried out. It was a difficult decision for us. A resident evacuated from one of the towns expressed resignation over the survey's acceptance. I think we will never be able to go back home in our lifetime. We really have no other choice. No way else would accept such a thing. The International Atomic Energy Agency has reported a security breach. Agency officials say hackers accessed one of its computer servers and stole the email addresses of nuclear experts. The IAEA says the com compromised server is in Vienna. Officials say the hackers posted the contact details of more than 160 experts online. They added a message demanding the agency inspect a nuclear facility in Israel. Observers say the hackers were apparently trying to put pressure on the IAEA by disclosing data on experts who can influence the agency. Now, Israel is widely believed to possess nuclear weapons, but officials there say they are not obliged to undergo IAEA inspections because Israel is not a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Iran and Arab nations denounced that position. And while I was sleeping, my friends were very busy, and they've come up with this nice list of all the NRC employee email addresses, which somebody may or may not put to use on this hundreds of them hundreds all the way from a all the way down to z i mean the, the, there's hundreds it, it's incredible i mean we're on page four and we still haven't got out of the a's yet so anyway just thought i'd remind you that when i tell you something it's probably true because I, I don't lie, and we will kill the system. Um, as far as the link to the NRC email addresses, the link to the entire folder will be below. And you just go in there and look right here. If you haven't picked up those other screenshots that I showed yesterday, you can do that while you're in the folder. Take the whole folder if you want. Um, but this link right here will give you all the email addresses. Much love.
Many thanks for your work. And if anybody should gather any other information that is needed to crush this nuclear industry out of these email addresses, please feel free to email it to me, or however you choose. Upload it, and I'll get it, whatever. Give me a heads up. I'll share it with the rest of our friends who are working very hard to keep this planet safe. The people in charge of the site of the world's worst nuclear accident say they've taken a big step in cleaning it up. Workers have raised part of a permanent shelter around a reactor at the nuclear plant in Chernobyl. The area around the plant is highly contaminated. The workers raised an arched section that will surround the destroyed unit. The number four reactor was covered with a concrete and metal structure after the explosion in 1986. But the so-called stone coffin deteriorated and could release radioactive substances. Workers began building the new shelter in April to go around it. It's 250 meters wide and 105 meters high. Government officials say engineers designed the structure to last for 100 years. Workers are scheduled to complete the project in 2015, but they have to minimize their exposure to radiation. Japan, the United States and Europe are providing financial support. Project managers estimate costs will exceed $1.2 billion. Thousands of people in northern Japan spent a cold night without electricity. A snowstorm pounded the island of Hokkaido, cutting power lines. Winds knocked down an electricity pylon. Hokkaido Electric Power Company officials are setting up temporary generators. More than 20,000 homes were without electricity on Wednesday morning. About 260 people were forced to move into shelters. I can't stand the cold anymore. I'll stay in the car and keep the engine running. It's the weather, so there's no point complaining. Power Company officials say it may take a few days to erect a makeshift tower and fully restore power. Officials at Japanese retailer 7 and I Holdings are planning for the next major earthquake. They'll introduce a computer system that can monitor the extent of damage at their convenience stores across Japan. The new system was co-developed with a mapping company and is set to launch next month. It can automatically display the intensity of an earthquake at over 15,000 stores nationwide. The program also detects power outages based on the status of ATMs installed at each outlet. The system then suggests possible transportation routes based on information released by transit authorities. Executives at 7&I Holdings say they had difficulty assessing the condition of their 7-Eleven stores and supermarkets after last year's disasters. Management struggled to grasp which outlets needed more staff or supplies and from which stores to send them. Company officials say they hope the system will help them reopen damaged stores as quickly as possible.
notice how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing? Seoul's chief negotiator on North Korea's nuclear program will visit Beijing on Thursday. The trip comes amid mounting concerns about the possible launch of another North Korean long-range missile. The South's foreign ministry says envoy Im Son Nam will meet senior Chinese officials during his two-day visit. Among the officials will be Du Wu Daowei, that's Wu Daowei, chair of the six-party talks on North Korea's nuclear program. The move follows the release of photos taken by U.S. military and commercial satellites earlier this month. The images indicate that Pyongyang appears to be preparing for a missile launch from a base in the northwest. A long-range missile was fired from the same facility in April, but the launch failed to put what the North claimed was a satellite into orbit. The South Korean negotiator is likely to ask China to persuade the North to halt the test.